What's up guys, Mark here from VIP Shop Management. I always like to, like I'm so close with my customers that I like to announce that pre-announcement sometimes, but it's, it's all right. I mean, I like it and I think it feels good. Nobody's doing what I'm doing. Um, uh, you're not gonna find a shop management uh, owner or CEO come in and make these videos and that give us an advantage. I believe at some point they're gonna copy VIP Shop Management. Uh, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Techmetric or Shop Monkey start copying me pretty soon and start making videos like I do because it's uh, it creates a connection with our customers and let them know uh, what we up to and uh, how we're gonna make their life better. Um, I want to talk about the just uh, so it's just the news. They should think about it as. Um, as uh, like uh, somebody's telling you something behind the scenes. Uh, we are negotiating right now with Motor um, uh, to get the labor guide. And uh, most likely, I, I don't want to confirm it yet, but most likely we are coming uh, to an agreement. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we are coming to an agreement where, um, uh, like I said, I want to add labor guide, but I don't want to raise the prices for, for the 55 and the $99. And, uh, most likely it's gonna happen. Well, uh, I'll confirm with you guys next week. Um, uh, so uh, that's that's pretty cool. Another thing I want to talk about is I know uh, somebody was telling me um, uh, when you when you let's let me let me talk about this real quick. So when you like um, drag and drop and they were having problems. Sometimes it was reorganizing by itself or something. Uh, we already fixed that um, uh, and we even made it faster right now to even do what you need to do so uh, that should be fixed you shouldn't have any problem just make sure you're on generation 140. all right so partnership with motor is very important because the uh, motor is the supplier for for everybody for for uh, for all data for mitchell one i mean not 100 percent, but yes uh, for uh, identifix identifix relies so much on motor uh, for um, shop monkey tech metric all of them so it's it's a gateway of, of more than just labor guide but we're gonna start with labor guide with motor and uh, we'll see how we go I mean if we want to get diagrams one day or procedures we'll be ready for that I'm not promising that this is gonna happen as this stuff costs money um but all what i'm i'm saying is we are in negotiation um to get labor guide and uh and like i said the the, the I've, I've already spoke to to uh, uh to uh, like basically i want to pay for it in a way that i don't want to raise the prices obviously they're not going to give us labor guide for free so i'm going to pay pay for it and that way will give us a huge advantage uh, over the not huge advantage. You're gonna be like you're gonna look stupid <laughs> if you have Techmetric or Shop Monkey or any other one, and you could have had uh, a VIP Shop Management. I always empower the the people who believes in me, and uh, and I will never let them down. As simple as that. I don't make decisions based on. Uh, making more money. I still have to make money, but I don't make a decision based on making more money. I make decision based on um, making the the product um, better and get paid at the same time. So that's my philosophy. Uh, if the company doesn't make money, uh, then you will run our business and that's not going to happen. So yeah, this, this video probably is just a chit chat. Uh, like I said, this is uh, not a hundred percent. It's just uh uh, negotiation <laughs> and uh, but we are it looks like it looks it looks good that's all I can say it looks good that it's gonna happen so it's highly likely it's gonna happen but it's never 100% sure and um, we'll see we'll see we'll take it from there uh, one more point that I want to mention that um, that VIP shop management is an application and, and there's a huge advantage of, of having an application versus having uh, a website um, and there's some disadvantages like you know ability to open it on the phone and all that um, just make sure and keep that in your mind as a customer or a new customer that the VIP shop management 
at one point will be our website looks better than most websites so when it comes to creating an application um, uh, with with cool features and, and all that stuff uh, using uh, HTML browsers and, and website we will be there so keep that in mind that, that, that just because you are signed up for VIP shop management as an application and oh my god I cannot use VIP shop management on Mac computers or, or Apple or Android you never know and I'm not saying it's gonna happen like soon I really don't know I cannot give you a timeline but it is on the list yes we will have uh, something that will work side by side with VIP shop management application that we still can have the application and you still can have the ability to open it on the phone and all that I mean we already confirmed and showed you that uh, with with the ability to send a request to your customer um, for so the customer can can self check in himself from his own phone so we already proved that um, another thing I want to talk about uh, is uh, for new customers if you want to move uh, uh, to uh, I'll be making video about that but if you want to move uh, from Mitchell one and you want to bring your data uh, there's a company that we gonna be we are in the middle of partnering with so they can bring your data however this gonna be a fee that pre like you gotta pay a fee and basically they're the middle person basically what they do is they they'll take your data from TechMetric or ShopMonkey or Mitchell one and they convert it to a different design for us where we can import this data uh, from my end, you will not, I'm not going to charge you anything to, to bring the data and import it. Uh, but from your, from, uh, all right, thanks GeForce. From, <laughs> from, uh, from their end, obviously this company, that's what they do uh, for a living. So they're going to get paid. So there's a fee. So if you are interested in, uh, uh, like have that fear that you're gonna lose if you, if you had let's say Mitchell one for 20 years and now you have that fear that you want to lose your data to come to VIP shop management uh, there is a solution uh, there is a fee for that um, if you have any questions call me and I'll let you know about that fee and now I will not want make one penny off that fee uh, but you gotta pay it so but we we're the one who's gonna charge it as the company um, like basically you gotta pay us and we have to pay the company but I, I didn't want that but that's how they run their business so uh, it is what it is so so yeah that's that's another solution that that's already on the work too um what else I want to talk about yeah accounting okay so if I see a demand okay the same company that brings the data the same company that brings the data and uh, like uh, bring data from a different shop management. It's like they call themselves Swiss Switzerland. Basically, uh, they don't they, they there's a you, there's a copyright, so they don't show you the data structure. Basically, they can see the data structure and give us a generic photo form of the of the data to be able to import it to our system. And we're working with them uh, vice versa too. So, but um they can do the accounting too they will have the ability to send uh, the each invoice whether daily or or, or monthly to a different uh like to quickbooks and all that i'm still not sold out on that myself i'll, I'll think about it um, i need to see if there's demand obviously for it there's a fee it's not that much but you gotta pay them too uh, actually you gotta pay me and then i have to pay them um, I know TechMetric, uh, they're part of it, so they're already part of it, TechMetric, yes, they're already part of it, so we can partner with them, uh, I mean, I spoke to the owner, and he he's, he's, has the same mentality like me, and that's all I always partner with somebody that we can trust, and um, obviously, they gotta get paid, uh, but yes, but he, that I can try, like, this, this company is trustworthy company, uh, where we can partner with them no problem so that's in the works um, last subject I want to talk about has to do with VIP shop management 
I want to talk about electric cars and what's going on in this world. And there's that fear of, of among everybody of uh, electric cars are taking over uh, the big three here in Michigan. I don't want to call them big three anymore. It's kind of, there's the big two and there's uh, Stella. Uh, Dodge uh, always let me down. Uh, they let me down of dismantling the SRT team which is the best thing that ever happened to uh, race cars uh, and, 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 and their, uh, the way they said it, oh don't worry, uh, we, 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 we took the team apart but we put them in each, we didn't fire them so you don't have to worry about that and now they came up with a new Grand Cherokee that everybody likes, it seems like I don't like it, I've always bought, I've been driving Grand Cherokee from 19, like from the beginning, the first generation, second generation, all of them till up to, and I drive the track hawk right now, and now I'm at the point where I cannot let go of my track hawk, because the new generation, from the side it looks nice, from the front the way it dips, I don't like it, from the rear it looks like a Toyota Sienna, I, I I don't I don't understand. So I don't. And usually back in the days before uh, Chrysler merged with the new companies, usually when there is a problem with the Grand Cherokee design, like I remember in 2011, they redesigned it instantly and uh, and and fixed it. And so 20 uh, 2011 2012 is different than 2014. And uh, I don't see this happening this time. Um, something is off about it maybe they're trying to bring in new different customers i'm just not a big fan after all these years i can't believe i don't know what to drive and especially right now if you buy a car uh then they're telling you oh by 2025 we're going to switch 100 percent to electric so what does that mean i might have a last gasoline engine what i'm going to pump gas for this thing so i get it it takes time but it looks like, man, the government and the world and everybody is switching to electric, whether we like it or not. And, and uh, the problem with that is and they can control that. Some people say, oh, I would never switch to electric. It's not even an option as of right now. Because once they raise the gas prices to $15 a gallon, what are you going to do now? You're going to be running to buy a Tesla car. So it's a problem. And uh, what I don't like about it, this problem, I'm, I'm in your shoes, especially I think mechanics would not like a, a Tesla car, or I'm not saying Tesla, I forget Tesla, electric vehicle car, uh, because two things, me personally, I always talk about my personal, so if, if, you, if you don't agree, you don't have to agree, I'm just saying my uh, personal opinion, and my personal opinion is, I'm getting in a car, it's already running, there is no start. I love one of the coolest things in the cars since I was a kid to right now was the ignition. You turn it on and turn it, like you turn the ignition and start the car up. And then they, they optimize it through the years where now you press the button and it start right up. I love this feature. I never it never bothered me. I never wanted a car that's already running. Another thing that I liked uh, from a, from being from being a kid to right now is uh, when you start the car, you see an RPM, revolution per minute, like the engine is spinning. And this has been taken away too. Um, uh, most people love the whole idea of the car self-driving. I never had that pro I always want to drive. Like, if I'm in a cab, I wish I can tell the guy, sit down, let me drive, and then I'll give you the, key uh, the keys back or I'll let you drive back home. I never wanted someone else to drive me. I feel like in case something happened, I always make the best decision for me. <laughs> so I never want. I, I when I was when I was married, I always drove. I mean, the good thing she was okay with that. Um, uh, but yes, I like to drive. So self-driving cars. It's. It, I never dreamt about my car driving me to work. And some people say, well, you know, I work. I have to drive two hours a day. And that's why uh, it'd be nice to have a self-driving car to take me there. Well, why don't you move? It's either move your job or move your, your, your house um, uh, and, and solve this. One. You're wasting two hours. Your problem is not the self-driving. Your problem is um, you're wasting two hours on the road. That's, you're never going to get back. 
So self-driving cars, uh, God knows how long. I could never trust self-driving cars for two reasons. Number one is uh, when I get in a train drawn by itself, yeah, because it's on a track. Uh, when I get in a self-driving car, uh, there's so many unknowns that car could never understand and will never understand in, st in case something popped up in front of it and uh, Elon Musk forget to program it now I'm dead so I could never <laughs> trust this stuff let them do it let them do what they gotta do I'm not saying don't do it I'm saying I would never trust it unless the uh, AI become like a million times smarter than than a human and when AI was introduced to something new if, if AI never seen this can of coke and it has the ability to understand what it is and even though he never seen it before, then I would understand that. But as long as AI is relying <laughs> on Elon Musk or the others tell him, oh, this is a can of Coke, <laughs> I will never trust AI driving the car. Oh, this is the light. Make sure the red light, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, that's, not, that's not the case. So I would never trust. I, I never had to, I don't, I don't want my car to drive by itself. I never want to, my car to drive myself. Why am, I, why am I talking about this uh, electric vehicles? Because two problems. Uh, I, I, well, first of all, I'm having a problem myself is I don't want an electric vehicle, whether it's Tesla or Ford or, or GM or Chrysler. I don't want an electric vehicle. And, uh, and I'm not going to be paying $15 an hour at some point for, or, or taxes, extra taxes on, on my car. So what is the solution here? Um, I was looking at the history of Michigan man, how Henry Ford and the person who created uh, uh, the gasoline engine and, and all the, the, the era of Michigan, how uh, the, the factories in, in Michigan during World War I and, and World War II uh, became a place where they, can, they created uh, tanks to save the world. Uh, looking at the world, the, the wars from back home, so I was, I was back home in Lebanon when, when they were teaching us uh, like what happened about, uh, in World War I and World War II and, and every time I read the, the, the story, I was like, oh wow, these countries were fighting together and then the United States came in and ended the war. I was like, okay, then the United States is a hero. Then in World War II, same thing, these countries were fighting together. And then the United States joined the world and ended the war. Ended the war, I was like, uh-huh. And I, so I could never understand. I was like, so the only reason I'm alive, obviously, is because of the United States. And that's when I was back home and I was a kid and I did not know anything about the United States, but I did know those two facts and I was appreciative as a kid. Now, coming to Michigan and living in Michigan, I understand this whole history of how much Michigan contributed uh, to the war, to the wars, and, 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 and made, the, made, the war, made the world a peaceful place, uh, then, then, you know, help us, I mean, help me to be alive, and I think a lot of people are alive is because of the United States. Uh, that's why the American people, man, I've always have respect for the United States and the American people. Uh, for the rest of my life, ever. I love this country more than anybody else. Um, big fan of the country, big fan of the Constitution. When I read the Constitution for the first time, I couldn't believe what I'm reading. I was like, this is brilliant. <laughs> Why any other country doesn't steal it? Well, it turns out they can't because <laughs> they don't want to lose the chair. So anyway, I'm not here to talk in politics. I just want to talk about one thing is uh, VIP shop management. Um, we are VIP. I don't like to talk about I, even though VIP shop management is me and me is VIP shop management. But we're gonna attempt. I, I'm I'm saying it as just an attempt. In, in in the problem, the way I look at it is everybody trying that like what Tesla did, which is I don't give the credit to Elon Musk. I only give him the credit of the success to Tesla, but he did not create Tesla. And there's two other people who created Tesla. And uh, according to people, they almost ran it to the ground. That's not my issue. What I'm issue that that was their dream. So they're the founders, and and we cannot take anything away from Elon Musk bringing the, his money and and putting the work and and getting it to this point. 
which is impossible to be done, don't get me wrong. But he is not the founder. I've always said a couple things about Elon Musk is the guy never worked on cars. How does he know about cars? He didn't. He bought the company. So that makes a difference. I'm sure he does now because, you know, Elon Musk is the type of guy that who, who sees something he never seen before and he just learned it and now he'll, he'll be good at it. So what I'm saying, when he started, when he bought the company, he was just a programmer, maybe the, one of the best programmers, but he did not know about cars. He didn't even know what, how cars work, probably. So, but the two people that... Nobody want to talk about or even mention their names, which is so messed up that created Tesla in the first place. Um, I, I'm the one of one of the few that acknowledged their. their um, I know they're rich now and they get money, but I'm the one of the few that acknowledged their 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 vision and their dreams, and and that was amazing what they done. And uh, don't like how uh, Elon Musk and Tesla and, and and all the founders put them away in a way. Oh, we don't want to talk about them. At least acknowledge their, their 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 vision. That's all I can say. However, all right. The last point I want to make, and I'll let you go, guys. I know whoever's watching, whoever's still watching to this point, but sometimes when you watch to the end, there's something cool in the end. In 2000, this is my last story, and I'll tell you what I'm what I'm up to. In 2002, I had a car accident. I was driving. Uh, that's why I never drive a Honda or Toyota or any foreign cars. In 2000. Uh, two, I had a car accident. I wasn't paying attention and my Honda, every time I push the brakes, instead of stopping, it's like ice skate to the other car. So I wasn't paying attention. I looked for a second. I remember I looked like this for a second. I came up and I'm looking in front of me. There was a big Ram 1500 uh, at, at, at dead stop. And I'm coming like down under the bridge and he was at dead stop under the bridge. And so I pushed the brakes. I knew I'm coming at him at high speed. There's no way. And the, the, the problem with the, with, the, with the ram is super high. My car was super low. I, I think his, uh, his toe hitch was going to go through the windshield and kill me. Literally because I was coming at high speed. So what I did instead, I, I hit the curb. I couldn't do much because it was full of cars on this side. And I'm the type of guy... Uh, I don't want everyone else to crash because I, I, I have a problem. So I, I, I chose this side, even though there was nothing in this side. I chose it. I hit the curb and my car basically did this. It hit the curb, went up in the air and flip on its, on, its, uh, on its roof upside down. That moment changed my life. I, I came up with a plan. I was like, my car is a moron. And then let me explain why. I was like, why doesn't my car has a has a device to calculate the distance and the speed between my, this, my car and the car in front of me. If my car warned me that this, the car ahead of me um, was a dead stop, at least it could, we could have used the ABS to stop by itself or at least warn me and tell me the car is in front of you. I think ABS was already there so we could have used the ABS to stop the car by itself or slow it down a little bit. Or give me a warning. So that was my idea in 2002. Um, I didn't know about patents. Did not know anything about how could you do like how do you make an idea a reality? Uh, and now that you get a file for a patent first, and then and then try to make it a reality. And then when this idea came, I think I the first time I bought the Grand Cherokee in 2014, it had the, the, I bought the SRT and it came with the forward, they call it forward collision right now. But that was my idea in 2002. So, yes, I don't know. We don't know who is. Did somebody steal it from me or somebody was thinking about it at the same time? Somebody thought about it later on or somebody thought about it before me? That, I don't know. All right now, I could have made this in 2003, ready, since I thought about it in 2002, because all the equipment was there to make it happen. So fast forward. <sighs> My God, man, it's taking forever, man. I don't know, maybe I should stop. Okay, let me, let me I'm not going to talk about this. All right, so I'm working on a secret project. That's all I can tell you. Uh, I'll talk about it in the future <laughs> because it's too much time already. Anyway, appreciate you guys until next time. Thanks for watching.